Comrade Chandrajan, Assembly Committee member and other leaders of the CPI Mandala and elders and my dear brothers and sisters. India today is going through a very, very serious test and a crisis of our constitutional order that is engulfing in all spheres of public life. The economy is in ruins. The constitution is being assaulted day by day. The atrocities on women are rising. The gang rapes and murders and crimes against women have never seen such a dimension as, as we are seeing now. New attacks on the Dalits, minorities. And on top of all this is this entire tourism agenda that this government is bringing on the CAA, CAA the NRC and the NPR. We are today in the midst of a very fierce battle and struggle and my appeal to all of you is that as Indian patriots, we all have to stand up together in order to save India today so that we can change India for the better tomorrow. And that is why today, in the seven months, eight months since this Modi government has come back, the only agenda they are pursuing is the agenda of dividing our people. They started with the abrogation of Article 370 and the special status of Kashmir. For more than six months now, the state of Kashmir is virtually under a police and security forces clampdown. The leaders have been arrested under draconian laws, former chief ministers, and the same people with whom the BJP formed an alliance and formed the state government. That chief minister is today arrested under the Draconian Public Safety Act. And the reasons are given are all flimsy. The basic essential point is Jammu and Kashmir is the only state in India which has a Muslim majority. And it is that state that they first targeted and in order to ensure that that special status does not continue. Then came the Ayodhya Vajay. After that now the CAA, NRC, NPR. So all these things they are doing at a time when Indian people require relief from the severe economic crisis. But that the basic job of the government that they are not attending to. This is an issue we must all very clearly understand and the need has come for all of us to put together our forces in order to combat these sort of politics and these dangers. That is why Today, whenever we raise these issues opposing this government on all these matters that are destroying our republic, our secular democratic republic, we are charged as being anti-national. We are charged as saying you are speaking the language of Pakistan. They must be told very clearly, every religion will have its own ego. The Muslims have the Quran, the Christians have the Bible, the Hindus may have the Bhagavad Gita or any other book, but for an Indian patriot, like all of us, there is only one holy book, and that holy book is the Constitution of India, and anybody who violates that Constitution of India will be opposed by us. What we are doing is upholding Indian patriotism in the highest manner. Mr. Modi, Mr. Shah, we are not anti-national. Those who are violating our constitution are anti-national. We are protecting our constitution. We are Indians and put supremely patriotic in this. And that is why. Why do we oppose the CA? Because it is for the first time that citizenship is being linked to the religion of an individual. Our constitution does not permit that. Therefore, it is anti-constitution. What is the chronology? Mr. Amit Shah wanted us to understand the chronology of NPR, NRC and CIA. What is the chronology? What is this NPR, National Population Register, that is going to come? They are going to start the enumeration 1st of April. We are saying that we will not answer any questions regarding the NPR that they will come to ask. Why are we saying it? Because on the basis of our answers to the questions, the enumerator will note down the answers. And then a government appointed registrar will decide whether the answers given are genuine or they are doubtful. Although they consider as doubtful, their names will not be found in the NRC that will be prepared on the basis of this NPR. So answering questions on NPR means the NRC is already being made. 
and in Anasi, if your name is not there, then you will have to produce documents on all the issues that they will ask you to, and only then your name can be included. And this is the process that is going to harass and process that is going to eliminate the vast majority of the poor people in our country, the Dalits and the tribals, who will have, who cannot find any documents to prove the answers they, are, they have given. So this is the way in which they want to isolate and divide the Indian people in the name of religion and thereby destroy the foundation of this constitution. That is why we oppose this. That is why today most of the tribal people in our country, they move season to season from one place to another. They do not have documents to prove their place of residence. Today, lakhs and lakhs of people, their huts are washed away in the annual floods that occur all over the country. After the floods, they go and settle down some, at some other place. Where do they produce any certificate of residence? Today, for even for my generation, many of us were not born in the hospitals. You were born at home. Who will bring a certificate saying certificate on your date of birth? Many of those, like my children, were born in hospitals, have a certificate saying a boy is born or a girl is born. But the name is not there. How will you match the name with that certificate of birth? Like this, there are scores and scores of problems, particularly to the Dalits and to the poor, people belonging to all religious, uh, religious minorities who will be subjected to harassment. There was a pilot project that was done by the government of India in 2015-16. And what did they find? More than 55% of the Indian people do not have documentation to prove what is being asked by Modi Shah government today. 55% of Indians will be out of this NRC and that is the basis of division among the people and that is going to be drawn to a division between religions and the Muslim minorities particularly will be targeted and that is something this red flag and the CPIM will not allow and that is why we shall fight this forever saying that and every citizen of India irrespective of their religion has the same rights and that will be protected. That is why today they start a very, very, very dangerous campaign against religious minorities in Afghanistan. They are targeting only of the Muslim minorities and raising a question on their patriotism and their being patriots of the Indian nation. Now this is the worst thing that can happen to the unity integrity of our people. Modi Shah should remember, when the country was partitioned, the Hindus did not have any option to go and settle in any other country when we got independence. But the Muslims had an option. Muslims had an option to go to Pakistan. But more Muslims in number than what was the population of the whole of Pakistan, more Muslims decided to stay back in India because this is where they were born, this is where they will die, and this is their country. And today they question their patriotism. And people who had a choice, but by choice they, they stayed back in India. And the first major war with Pakistan in 1965, who was the first? Paramvir Chakra. Paramvir Chakra is the highest honor for sacrifice in the war. Who was the first person to get the Paramvir Chakra from the government of India, from President of India? Subedar Abdul Hamid. Abdul Hamid, a Muslim by birth, was the first man to be given the Paramvir Chakra in a war against Pakistan. He gave up his life to defeat Pakistan. He gave up his life as an Indian Muslim for the sake of India and not the wives of Pakistan like these people allege today. So patriotism is not connected with religion. Patriotism is today an ingrained quality of each one of us who wants to protect our secular democratic republic. And that is why today all these games to divide the people of India in the name of religion is the worst vote bank politics that is being played. Modi Shah charges as being vote by politics.
In fact, the worst vote by politics is being played by the BJP that targets religious minorities, particularly Muslims, in order to consolidate the communal Hindutva vote bank. And this is the worst vote by politics that is destroying the country and therefore these politics must be defeated. That is why all this is happening. When they are, their policies have ruined the economy and livelihood of crores of Indian people. Today our economy is in a state of recession. Unemployment is the highest in half a century. Our farmers commit distress suicide because of the debt burden. Our, the prices of all essential commodities are rising and only two days ago, this Modi government increased the price of cooking gas cylinders. Life is becoming impossible. For the first time in our country, price rise is such. I don't know what is happening in New Tamil Nadu, but I was brought up in Hyderabad, so we eat Hyderabadi biryani. For the first time, this time when we went to Hyderabad and asked for biryani, they gave biryani but no onions. I said, why, why, how can you have biryani without onions? They said, onions are more expensive than the biryani itself, than the chicken or the mutton that is there. So, biryani without onions, you are saying, I don't know in Tamil Nadu what is your situation. But that is the state of affairs, people are not able to live a normal, decent life. Instead of giving them relief, they continuously give relief to the rich. And that is, again, ruining the livelihood of all our people. That's why, instead of providing relief, they continue to give concessions to the rich, more and more concessions. We are saying, give debt relief to the farmers so that they stop committing suicide. That this government is not giving. But they give relief to the big corporates and the rich people who have taken, looted our banks, public sector banks, in which your money, my money, all of our money, our savings are put. They have looted these banks, but their loans are waived, but not that of the farmer who is committing suicide. Two lakh fifteen thousand crores of rupees of new tax concessions this government has given in the last two months to the rich. The rich in the India are such now, one percent of India's population, the richest per, uh, people, one person today has a share of 73 percent of our country's wealth. One person. 112 individuals, Karolpatis, 112 people have a wealth that is four times, four times the wealth of 70 percent of India's population. This is the scandalous economic inequality. Instead of giving, providing relief for the poor, they continue to give relief and poor concessions to the rich. That is why this government has become a government that is looting our people in order to favor their crony capitalist friends. In return, they give money to the party which they spend during the elections and they have destroyed democracy by the play of money power. So this is what they are doing to our economy. Our country, they are destroying the secular democratic foundations. To the economy, they are destroying the livelihood of crores of Indian people. That is why, what is the solution? What is the CPIM and we are arguing? Instead of giving that 2,15,000 crores to the rich people as concessions, if the same money was used by the government to build our infrastructure, to build our irrigation ch uh, channels to the farmers so that they don't commit suicide, to dig wells in villages where there is no drinking water, to build rural roads for rural connectivity, if all this infrastructural development work can be done, and to do this, crores of new jobs will be generated. And when our today youth get jobs to do this work, then when they start spending their salaries, then the demand in the country will rise and the factories that are today closing down will all start reopening again. The economy can be revived through a process of public investment, but that this government will not do. 
Because if they do that, they cannot give further concessions to their friends, who in turn fund the party for their elections and their other activities. So in that situation, there is a way out. The way out is increase public investments, generate jobs, and then increase the purchasing power in the hands of the people. Instead of doing that, they do the exact opposite, that is ruining the life of crores of Indian people. That is why today, all of us together will have to fight against this government's all-round policies which are anti-people. So the CPIM has decided along with the left party that from the 1st of March, we will conduct programs all over the country of reaching out to the people, do a house-to-house -house campaigning to explain why they should not answer questions regarding the NPR and say that we will not show any documents as far as the NRC is concerned. If the Modi government dares, let them declare more than half of India as not citizens and then we shall see what, what will be the course that people will have to take. But that is something that we cannot accept the destruction of our constitution and our republic. At the same time, on all these issues of economic, uh, economic burdens that are being imposed on the people, the alternative that I just told you, on that basis the alternative, the policies will have to be structured, for that pressure will have to be put on this government through popular protests. So through the month of March, I am appealing to all of you, we will conduct these activities culminating on 23rd of March, which is the anniversary of the mart martyrdom of Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev, who were killed by the British for exposing the cause of both independence and for building a new nation. Bhagat Singh's vision will be an important part of this campaign and that was the vision of what? That in political independence that we get from the British must be converted into economic independence of every Indian. That can only be done through socialism and that is why Bhagat Singh and his colleagues when they went to the courts every day they would shout the slogan Inkala Zindaba. And the magistrate asked them what is the meaning? They explained the meaning saying that independent in India will be a modern inclusive India with socialism as its objective. So this campaign culminating on March 23rd will be to take forward our struggle for building a better India and more inclusive India and my appeal to all of you is to come, let us all together save India today so that we can change it for the better tomorrow. And that is what we all have to today do our service of our patriotism for our country. In Tamil Nadu, you will also have your share of the problems. You have one of the ruling parties now in the state which is now closely allied with the BJP in the centre. But after seeing what happened to Mehbubha Mufti and the PDP in Jammu and Kashmir, the AIDMK be prepared that their fate will also be similar, like, like what is happening to the former ally of the, of, the, of, the, of the BJP earlier. But anyway, that is the problem of the electoral things. But there are 30 chief ministers in the country who have announced that they will not implement the NRC in their states. We are appealing to the other chief ministers also, the non-BJP chief ministers, to also come forward and say not only NRC but also no NPR in their states like the Kerala government has done and like the Kerala assembly has passed that resolution. And that is the only way in which we can build up this pressure against this divisive agenda, this communal divisive agenda of the BJP RSS. So that is what our, our, our appeal to all of them is, go, is going to be and many of them have responded. That is very, very positive sign and in the coming days, I'm sure this will grow because these peaceful protests are being met with a very vicious violence. All the violence is taking place which is state-sponsored violence through the police in BJP ruled states or where the police is under the BJP, like in Delhi. It's in all the deaths in these uh, protests have happened where maximum number of people have been killed by the police in Uttar Pradesh, 21. Five have been killed in Assam, BJP government. Two have been killed in your neighboring uh, Karnataka, BJP government. 
and the violence in Delhi against our students, the future of India, against them where the police is directly under the Home Minister, Union Home Minister. So they are responding to peaceful protests through violence. That can only be defeated by a stronger peaceful protest and that is what all of us together will have to be built in order to save India today, to change it for the better tomorrow. So that is why today, as I said, we have all got to come together. This is not a fight of any one particular community. This is not the fight of Indian Muslims. This is not the fight of only Indian communists. This is the fight of every Indian to safeguard India today so that we can change India for the better tomorrow. That is why the Communist Party, 100 years of its history today, in this year, it will be 100 years since its formation. During the course of this century, this red flag has been the flag of sacrifice, flag of struggle, has been the flag that has propelled the people's movement both for our independence and for our change towards socialism. And this flag, we will have to caution Mr. Modi and Mr. Shah, the RSS and the BJP, that no amount or no force in the world has been able to lower the red flag, not even Hitler, not even Indira Gandhi, nobody else has been able to lower it because the flag itself is of the color, which is the color of the blood of every human being. As long as this color of the blood will remain red in any, every human being, this red flag will continue to uphold the values of humanity, of humanism of the people and will continue to fight. So we want to tell Mr. Modi and Mr. Shah that we are the ones, you be born, we will defend the constitution, we will defend India, we will change India for the better and that is where the people's support is what we are asking. So support us in our fight. It is not my fight or your fight. It is our fight today for our country and the future of our children and the future generation. So with the confidence that you will all join, like always people of Tamil Nadu have joined, in whether it was during emergency, when we were all being arrested, in order to escape arrest, we used to come to Tamil Nadu. Because Tamil Nadu provided us the sanctuary. So this time also you will have to take the lead and show the, along with the people of India that we will save our country, we will change our country for the better and with the confidence that you will all join these struggles and these protest movements in large numbers. With that confidence and with that appeal, I take leave of you once again. Thank you.